Hi there and welcome to the course on design floating point unit. This is the first in a series of courses which will eventually lead to the design of an entire floating point unit which will have a multiplication, addition, division, subtraction, fuse multiply, add, square root and possibly as well one that will cater for complex numbers. Now in the first course here we're dealing with just the numbers so there isn't any logism in this course this is purely about floating point numbers and understanding the normal numbers the subnormal numbers the ranges of floating point numbers and how the floating point numbers map to the real number line and also looking at things like rounding truncation precision and several several other uh, interesting features of, comp uh, of floating point numbers. I'd always wanted to design and build a floating point unit, but I'd only ever done paper designs and black box designs. So this course is a start and a lead towards creating an actual floating point unit, which potentially we could build in, say for example, CMOS, and it would work reasonably well. I mean, by reasonably well, what I mean is, would I trust it to, say, give me the coordinates to take me to the moon and back, or Mars and back, and that would stake my life on it? Probably not. But it will give us a good, something that will work and be a, a reasonably robust, and it will really something we can use as a, a learning aid for floating point numbers and the floating point unit. There are going to be around five or six courses that will cover the full floating point unit. At the moment, I'm about halfway through the third course, which is doing the adding and subtracting section. Now, if you were to go online and look for material on floating point units, there is a lot of stuff there, but it tends to be of two types. It tends to be either really um, kind of basic and black box, and the other option is it tends to be uh, scientific um, or, or engineering papers, in which case they tend to be a mixture of being very detailed, but also uh, not having a uh, all of the information required in order for someone who's just beginning to go and recreate what they have already created. So there never seems to be a, a middle ground in this whole subject of uh, floating point numbers and especially designing a floating point unit. So I'm hoping that this course is going to provide that middle ground. It's going to be better than any uh, course that you're going to do, which is maybe just going to give a, a kind of black box description of the, the unit but it's not going to be a course that's going to be uh, absolutely 100% um, accurate by that I mean would it be something that as I said before that you would state your life on and the answer would be no but it's accurate enough for us to get a really good understanding of a floating point unit and if you're like me, you, I started off looking to try and find the material, I found it very difficult to find stuff that was at the correct level. Now, there was one book that I, I can highly recommend, but I have to admit that it's a, a £126. Uh, that was the cheapest I could find it online. But there is uh, the book here, and it is called um, Handbook of uh, floating point arithmetic and really there's more in that than you will ever ever really need um, it's actually a fantastic book uh, and you'll get that online if you hunt through an Amazon or if you go online and uh, hunt through PDFs I'm sure you could find uh, something there that you could potentially use so I've started this course uh, probably about um, 
uh, two months ago, so I've been at it for about two months in total. I think when I started it, I didn't realise um, uh, how much uh, work was going to be involved in it. And if I'm absolutely honest, uh, I, I was kind of knocking my he head against the wall for a while. And I realised that in order for me to really understand this subject and really to build up a, a decent floating point unit, I would have to go back to the basics and try and figure an awful lot of it out for myself. And that's exactly what I've done. I've gone back to the real basics of every single zero and one. I've built up algorithms in Excel VBA and I've used Excel VBA tools in order to simulate what happens with floating point numbers, say when you convert them from binary to decimal or decimal to binary. And also whenever you go through the multiplication or the addition and subtraction. And I found that I'm, rather than uh, having that information freely available, I found that the information was actually quite difficult to find. And it's not as if the, whenever you uh, go through the simulations and work out for yourself, it's not as if it's, it's extremely difficult. But it just doesn't seem to be the information doesn't seem to be openly and freely available, which I find rather bizarre because if you think about a floating point unit, then there are hundreds of, possibly hundreds of billions of them now out there in, the, in CPUs and, and microcontrollers all over the world. Uh, yet, uh, if you go and hunt for a course on designing a floating point unit, well, I, I, you'll be lucky to find any, unless, of course, you're wanting to go in a, to a specific company that you're going to work in, um, so work with Intel or, a, or some computer design company, or you're at a university. But if you're not in that position, then finding the right information, I would suggest, well, for me, I found it quite difficult. Possibly I wasn't looking in the right places. Um, I, I, I'm not sure. But I just found it difficult to get the information that I was wanting. And I felt that at times, I've had to, in effect, just research it for myself and, and reinvent the the wheel that already exists, um, because uh, no one would show me how to build the wheel. <laughs> uh, so it's been a bit of a um, a, a love hate so far, but it's a bit of a slow burner. I started off uh, quite keen, and then slowly as I started building up the tools in Excel, it was difficult and uh, it, it was a bit um, a bit time consuming. Plus another thing about doing this type of course is that trying to work out whether you've actually uh, created something that works is part of the battle, meaning we're going to have to create uh, test scripts in order to test and find out whether we're actually, say, multiplying the numbers together correctly. You can't go out and try every single number by hand. And then even, I, I thought possibly it would be easy to find uh, a set of, uh, say, multiplications. So we could have a set, two sets of numbers, which would be multiplied together. So several, maybe, maybe you know, a couple of uh, gig worth of numbers that you multiply together and you get the actual result. And this would be like a, uh, a fixed uh, set of information that you could test the, your unit against and I thought that would again be readily available and, and easy to find but um, it, there is stuff out there but it's not obvious as how to work it and um, it's not uh, that readily available. So this has been a much more personalised and rambling introduction than I would normally do for a course. But I had to let you know the process that I've had to work through and the difficulties that I've had in order to put this course together. And it's taken longer than I, this course and the multiplier course, and they've taken longer than I would have expected. Now, another thing before I leave, uh, this is going to be part of a whole suite of courses. So I've already got a course on design a CPU, which is an Udemy. And once I finish the floating point unit, I'm going to have another course which will be Design a CPU 2, which will extend the CPU to 16 bits and also integrate this floating point unit into this that course as well. 
So eventually what will happen by sometime early to mid next year, well that's 2021, I'll have um, an entire suite of courses which in effect goes from an AND gate all the way up to uh, a fully functioning 16-bit uh, CPU with a floating point unit and probably with other factors incorporated as well like interrupts and, and so on and so forth. Now just before we go as well I'd like to say that um, I have spent most of my adult career after graduating in uh, electronics and communications from Edinburgh uh, University. I've spent most of my time in the communications sector and for the first seven years after I graduated um, I did uh, integrated circuit design. So I'm hoping by the end of these sets of courses uh, to have created uh, logic blocks which are robust enough, uh, which are designed well enough for us to take them and create them in say for example um, CMOS so we could implement them in CMOS. So in the end we'll end up with something that potentially you could lay out in silicon in a CMOS chip. But that's way into the future. Right now all we're trying to do is get something built in Logisim which really will just provide us with a proof of concept and a proof that the design will actually physically work. We'd still have to take it from Logisim and create uh, the actual uh, blocks themselves which would be, would be designed differently from the actual design within Logisim. That's a, another course um, nearer the end, so the fifth or sixth uh, course. So if you want to join me in this journey, you want to come along, oh, so if you want to help me in the journey, that would be great as well. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.